Labor Day was just Friday, yesterday. So we're pretty close to the official time. And thanks to Mayor Kite, we had a proclamation that was issued. And I'll read that as part of what we're doing before Tom will demonstrate the proper methodology of planting a tree from having it in the bag to the planting to the mulching, the staking, and then at the end, the watering is the most important, or an most important step. So the proclamation reads, Arbor Day Proclamation. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and whereas Arbor Day is now celebrated annually throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, oxygen and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other products, and whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community, and whereas trees, wherever they are planted, of joy and spiritual renewal. Now therefore, I, Rusty Hike, Mayor of Bellevue, do hereby proclaim April 20th as Arbor Day in the city of Bellevue, and I urge everyone to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodland. And I urge everyone to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. Signed, Bellevue is a tree city and has been a tree city. We have some members of the Bellevue Tree Board here with us today who will be with each of the groups helping. Tom Maroos is one of the founding members of the Tree Board. And Tom and I went to grade school together, so we've been friends with tree planters for a while. And uh, we have Deb Warachek, who is with the Bellevue Tree Board. Thank you. And also our secretary, keeping all good minutes, Holly Hoferider, who was the secretary and now the vice president of the tree board. everything with all of the plantings, the top of the gardens, the butterfly gardens. Nancy Scott is also on Green Bellevue Board and the Tree Board. And, and Joanne Langaby who does the flowers and, and the triangles and all around the city. The depot is the president, the current president of the Bellevue Tree Board who organizes much of the things that we do. So Joanne Langaby, retired teacher, Retired teacher, teacher still retired too. And it, yeah. So, uh, with that, if you want to get just a little closer, maybe you can see okay. But, Tom, if you would go through the instructions with everybody and maybe from an angle, since you're all around there, maybe from this side. Yeah. When you plant a tree, they say dig a hundred dollar hole for a fifty dollar tree. So the hole should be at least twice as wide as this root ball right here. So the roots roots grow out from the sides and they get all their nutrients 
about six inches to a foot underground. Some trees get a tap root to hold it in place, many don't. <coughs> so, tree bags, we're a believer in tree bags. I will not buy a tree that's grown in a plastic pot because the roots circulate around and if you don't break them apart, they'll choke each other and kill the tree. Now this bag is carried. Take this and loosen the roots. So if they're not wrapping around. One of the biggest mistakes tree planters make is putting it in too deep. Right now, that it looks like it's about three inches too deep. So we we'll need a few shovels full of dirt. Back it down. I think I got three inches in there. Yeah. <laughs> How's that look for a spray? Up and down? It's, it's angle. This way a little bit. Oh, this way. Oh, that down. way. Okay. There you go. Okay, there you go. okay. Now, now you can see it's higher. <coughs> you, you want this flare to be at least an inch higher than the ground level. What do you think? Looks good? Looks good. That still looks great up and down from each angle. One thing I forgot, if, if you use a, a tr uh, postal auger or some kind of auger, you should loosen these sides because they get, you need, you don't want your tree roots to struggle going out. And it's preferable not to not to put uh, broken grass in it. You can turn it upside down and put it around the tree on the outside, but you don't want to put it in here with the roots. So.
you don't want it packed, but you do want it firm. We don't want the tree to settle down, and after time, if it's too loose a soil, you get air, and you don't want too much oxygen at the root, and you also don't want that ball to settle, so then it goes deeper than what the root flare is. So we're trying to get it lined up pretty straight, and the bottom of it first, to make sure that's the case, and then firm it down. There are big clots, you can just loosen those up a little. This soil is primarily clay. It's not the best soil. You can see the difference with the organic matter where you got better soil. So if you are planting a tree and you're using clay like this, it's helpful to amend the soil and put a little better quality around the tree. But we didn't get that done on this one. Getting anything to be bored. Anybody got a rake handy? Yep. Right behind you. I like to use the rake to clean up the dirt that's been brought out of the hole so that the grass around it can go back. And then we'll show you what we do with any excess dirt here in a minute. with your tools or as you're using a shovel or whatever you're using to measure the depth you to get your things back out of the way if you're working to avoid any potential accidents. You want the dirt to be away from what we call the flare where the trunk meets the original root system. water here, it's going to disperse and run around to wherever water will run, the lowest point. So we're going to put a dike, a built up area, just a foot or a foot and a half outside of the distance from the tree. And I'm taking some of these lumps of sod and turning them upside down so they will die and putting them 
rather than just throw it away, it'll decompose, but putting them in the outside edge as part of that dike in. hold the moisture down to the ground and it will keep some of the vegetation. It's pretty tough to keep vegetation from growing around it, but this at least slows it down. It keeps the sun from baking it. That allows it to stay a little moist and when the water truck from the city comes out and waters it, it will hold some of the water there better so they're more efficient. And it's just regular mulch, ground up tree, limbs, and branches. When you mulch, you don't want it more than four inches at the most deep. Because if you have it too deep, the roots start growing into the mulch rather than growing down into the ground. So keep the mulch away from the flare and bring it out. Gradually to about three inches. And then you can put it out to the degree that you want. In this case, we're also going to put wire cages around because we live in Bellevue and we all know what the deer do. And they just love these young trees. And then we can put probably some more mulch around. But as Tom said, you want that area, you'll probably get some vegetation growing in there, but you, you don't want to hold the moisture against the base of the tree. So you want that open. Tree roots will grow into that mulch, and when it gets dry, they'll die or get a disease and send it up into the tree. these wires 18 feet and that gives enough room so that the branches can grow and not grow into the wire and if they start growing into the wire then they're going to be a problem for the tree long ends on one side of the wire so that it's easier to bend them around to link them in and hold it. But eventually this will come off so you don't want to do too heavy of a securing of it. And on a couple of these trees, we will stake them. We'll wrap around the tree a soft material and wire it out. 
but this one is standing good on its own and with this protection if you don't have a real big tree it's better not to stake them because the stake does rub and it does do some wear on the tree so if you have a good tree and it's small this is about an ideal size for planting or a little smaller people think they need real big trees because they grow faster or will grow but the root is really the heart and that's going to start growing and more attention will go into the root with the smaller tree. So this one is pretty set, but we have the cage and we need something to hold it. Eventually we'll have to look at this uh, top and choose something that will be the leader going straight up. I'm going to prune it a little bit. Tom, you want to demonstrate what you're talking about, two liters? What's to go straight up in the air? Ideal tree has one liter that goes up and everything is supposed to branch out from there. Therefore, I'm going to choose that one to be the leader. So I'm going to take this one. wire in the cage, the predominant winds in, in this area go north and south. In the summer they're blowing up from the south and in the winter they're primarily blowing from the north. So we tend to put the support or any stakes, any ties to the tree on the north and on the south. You can vary them a little to the east and to the west because Oftentimes, that's the direction of the wind. That just gives a little more stability to the staking or to the tree tied. And in this case, I probably shouldn't have tied the ends together before I put the stake in. Because we'll put the, the stake in, and then Tom and I will probably just lift it up. This one shouldn't be too hard. And put it on the inside. inside. Well, no, leave, leave it out there. We'll just lift it.
with the extra lengths that we have on the wire, pull those around to one of the stakes, and then just wrap a couple around the T-post. Careful not to have them come out, so if somebody walks by, they don't get scraped or injured by it. kind of straighten it up and after that you can take the rest of your mulch and wherever the wire is just make sure the mulch is a few inches out from the wire so when they mow they can mow around it and the grass will be at least a little bit slowed down from growing into it. Any questions? Then what I would like to do is ask each of the tree board members to go with a group of two people and kind of help and answer questions and make sure everybody's comfortable. And you can grab a tree. Some of you already started some. And go ahead and finish up your tree. There's a wheelbarrow down there. And there's some mulch piles. This one and then some down there. So you can use the wheelbarrows to get